Here I compute the bias of the sample mean as an estimator of the population mean, and then I look at some examples of different types of bias. So here I've written out the formula from the book for the bias of an estimator theta hat n. So as a reminder, the hat on top of the theta is an indicator that it's uh, something computed from the data sample. And taking the frequentist or classical perspective, the before sampling perspective, this is considered a random variable in the sense that if we sample different data sets, we'll get different values of the estimator and uh, there's different probabilities associated with those different values. So the bias in particular looks at the mean of the sampling distribution of the estimator and compares that to the true population value uh, of the parameter we want to estimate. So as I said, in per particular in this video we'll think about the uh, sample mean as an estimator of the population mean. So here our estimator is the sample mean and our population parameter is the population mean. And to keep things simple so we can focus on the new concept of bias, we'll assume the sampling is IID independent and identically distributed. So first to keep it extra simple, we'll think of a sample of size one well, in that case, the sample average is just whatever that one value that we observe is. So the mean of our estimator, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, so our n is 1, so I'll put a 1 in the subscript on theta hat. So that's the mean of the sample average in a data set of size 1, which is just the mean of that very first and only observation. And now, because we assumed IID sampling, that first observation has the same distribution as the population. It's just one random draw from the population. So its mean is equal to the population mean, which is our parameter of interest theta. So if we go back to our definition of bias, we would see that here the bias is zero because the mean of theta hat is equal to theta, so the difference between the two is zero. I'll write that out explicitly. So the bias is that. So we get zero, and the term for an estimator that has zero bias is unbiased. So at least so far for a sample of size one, we've shown that very generally uh, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. And we can try this again with n equals 2. So same idea. We'll compute the mean of 
our estimator. So now I put a subscript 2 for the sample size, which again is the sample average. So that's one half times the sum of our two observations. Now here we need the linearity property of the expectation operator, um, which first says we can pull out the constant one half outside the expectation. Don't worry too much if you wouldn't think of this on your own. Y1 plus Y2. And then it also says that the mean of the sum of two random variables is equal to the sum of the means. So we can write this. Oops, sorry, it's two. And now again, like before, because we have this identically distributed property, the mean of both y1 and y2 is equal to our population mean. So we can plug in that population mean over here. So those are the same, so that's just 2 times theta. Remember theta was the population mean. So you can see the 1 half and the 2 will cancel out, and we'll just get theta. So it takes some more steps and using some more properties of the expectation operator, but again the, the conclusion is the same that the mean of our estimator is equal to the population parameter we're trying to estimate. So again, the bias is zero, or in other words, uh, the sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. And you can generalize this even further um, if you have a general n, again, this is extra credit if you want to try to follow this. So if we have a general n, and we write out the general formula for the sample average, yi, uh, the linearity property of the expectation operator lets us first take the 1 over n out, and then it lets us turn this mean of sums into a sum of means. And then again, by the IID assumption, all of these uh, expected value of yi are all the same and all equal to theta. So we have n of them. We have n thetas, and then we have that 1 over n out front. So we again end up with theta. So in general, if we have IID sampling, and actually even without independence, as long as we have this identically distributed sampling, the uh, sample mean is an unbiased estimator of the population mean. Now, just to see some examples of different types of bias, although these uh, estimators are clearly not ones we'd use in practice, we could consider what if our estimator were the sample average 
plus 1. Well, in that case, again, we'll compute the mean of our estimator. So here, my plus 1. Again, using that linearity property, we can pull out the plus 1. One. And we know from above, this first part is equal to theta because the sample mean was unbiased. So here we got the true theta plus 1. So this is an example of positive or upward bias. That is, if we imagine the number line down here, and here's the true theta over here, our estimator on average will give us a value that's too high, or, you know, theta plus one in the positive direction. If instead we Subtracted one and minus one. Uh, then you sort of get the same thing, but we'll get a minus one at the end instead of a plus one. So let's put dot dot dot. So that's an example of negative bias or downward bias in the sense that the mean of our estimator's sampling distribution is to the left of the true value, or below the true value. So it could be the true value is 5, and our estimator's mean is 4. It could be the true value is negative 10, and our estimator's mean is negative 11. Um, it's just whatever minus one. And as the last example, if you imagine our estimator is 0.5 times the sample mean, then the mean of our estimator Again, using this linearity property will be 0.5 times that, which above we saw was equal to theta. So we'll get 0.5 times theta. So this is an example of attenuation bias, because in this case, it's not, sorry, 0.5 theta. Uh, our estimator on average isn't always above theta or below theta. It's just closer to zero than theta. So for example, if theta is positive 10, 0.5 theta would be 5. So it's somewhere between 10 and zero. If the true theta were negative 10, then 0.5 theta would be negative 5. So again, it's between the true theta and 0, even though in the second case it's above the true theta, in the first case it's below the true theta. So in that case, it's what we call attenuation bias.